Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Confounded Chronicles. Today we finally got the machine up and running, we got parts made, and today we're going to make that little thing. So what we're going to cut is a little keychain. I've done this in the past in stainless, uh, but this is the first time we're going to see and see it. So this is just aluminum. I put some chamfers on it, and a logo engraved, and a hole to mount it on a keychain. First we're going to face it, remove a bunch of the stock, contour it, finish, finish contour, uh, peck drill it, and then drill through. And finally we'll uh, do the little engraving of my logo on the front of it. The first step is to uh, indicate my vise up onto the mill. I don't really plan on using this vise with this mill. I'll probably end up going with a larger vise. I just don't think this one has the holding power, and it's it's fairly economically priced. So uh, once again, kind of get what you pay for. But works great for manual milling, just with CNC milling. Um, a little bit more force can be put on the part, and I'd like a little bit stronger of a vise. Or maybe like a fixturing plate. That would probably be a better option. So what we're going to do is just we're going to really roughly indicate this in. If I can get it indicated in within a few thousandths of an inch, that'll be more than accurate for this part. Uh, so I'm just sweeping it back and forth. What I really need is a test indicator, but the dial indicator works as well. Uh, so I just tighten up the clamp slightly, and then I tap it just to get it close to where you want to be. The part's really small, so I'm not super critical about getting the, the faces indicated in perfectly. Next, we're going to take a little stock, or piece of stock and put it in the vise. I got some tooling blanks on the bottom to act as parallels. Normally I would use an indicator um, or an edge finder to bring this into perfect alignment, get the mill right over the uh, stock corner that I want. Once again we have a lot of extra material on either side of this part and it's not critical. I just want to I want to test this and make sure it all works out. So all I'm doing is jogging the mill down close uh, until basically I contact the surface and then touching off at that point. Then as a sanity check, I just move back to my zero zero to make sure we're dead on the corner of the stock that I want, and we can go from there. So this is the very first cut of the CNC mill. Now, as you can see, we're overcutting on the facing operation. My end mill is also chipped, I believe, so it's starting to chip weld. Um, but it's functioning. It's working. So I'm happy with that. Um, I also realize that I'm facing the wrong side of the stock. That's why the, the facing operation is carrying on so far to one side. Basically, the stock should have been mounted like this. So off camera, I basically faced up both sides so we could clamp it in the vise a little more precisely. And now we're going to face the correct side of this unit. I'm also putting a little uh, oil on the part just to act as a lubricant. Normally I want flood coolant with this system. You don't need coolant with aluminum, uh, but when you have a dull end mill, it sure helps. <laughs> I could have swapped in a brand new end mill, but once again, I'm testing. I kind of assumed at some point in this whole process I would crash the mill and snap the end mill. Um, and I, I just didn't want to break a brand new one, so I'm just trying to kind of cobble through with a dull one. This is the real-time cutting speed. Currently I have my rapids limited at like 15 or 20 inches per minute just because, once again, I'm expecting crashes. I'm not confident with my post-processor setup yet, um, but it seems to be functioning just fine. That's a four flute quarter inch end mill. We're cutting at uh, one thou chipper tooth uh, with a depth of 0.1 inch. Actually, I think this facing operation is doing uh, 0.05 inch depth of cuts. Uh, rounding down. This little mill can only spin up to about 2400 RPM, uh, so you're somewhat limited when it comes to material removal rate, but uh, for a hobby mill it seems to function just fine. So the finish on that part turned out quite well, actually. I mean, probably due to our low depth of cut, but hey, we're just trying to test it, make sure everything works, and trying to avoid crashes. Next up, we're going to adaptive clear all the rough stock away from the part. Here we're actually moving at 100% speed, and then shortly I'll 
bump the video up in speed because nobody wants to watch this for days on end. So what we're going to do is remove the bulk of the material around the part and then after we'll come around with a profile. Normally I could just adaptive clear all the stock out of the way, but this part has a slot in it, if you want to call it a slot. It's only about 50 thou wider than the tool, so it's technically not a slot, but it's a little bit too small to adaptive into. Um, I suppose I could, but anyways, I just adaptive cleared most of it and then just did a profiling to uh, get deep into that slot, which you'll see in the next step here. Once again, doing the best I can with uh, lack of air blast or lack of flood coolant to keep the chips away. This is basically just a chip recutting experiment. This is probably all I'm doing. I'm cutting more chips than I'm cutting parts at this point. So here the tool is going to adaptive into that little slot as far as it can with the settings I currently have into it and the next operation will come in and we'll basically slot into that which isn't the best but Once again, everything is set at about 20 inches per minute, so even the rapids coming around for that adaptive clear are set to just move slowly so I can catch any problems. Edge finish is phenomenal. I'm incredibly happy, especially with stock screws. I was expecting a lot more, uh, a lot more backlash and weird things to happen. So Here we're going to do the technically the roughing profile. I left 10 thou of stock on the adaptive clear, so this is going to come and it's going to take 5 thou off, and then we're going to do a final pass. Uh, to remove that last 5 thou and bring us to tolerance. There's that nasty kind of slotting operation. Once again dropping down 0.1 of an inch. And this will be a full depth of cut. Just to clean up that edge. So, the next part was going to be the drilling cycle to drill the little keyhole. I wasn't confident that my drilling cycle is going to work perfectly well, so I figured let's engrave it before we knock the part out of alignment. And here you can see my work coordinate system got skewed during my manual tool change. Uh, so basically I had to correct for that. I did a touch off and anyways, I, I messed up the coordinate system. So I corrected it here and it's going to take a 2000 depth of cut. And this is a little pyramid style engraving tool I use. Uh, it's just a carbide end mill that I ground up, basically a pyramid point to the end. They work incredibly well for engraving, and I've used them for a long time, so uh, it, it does a really nice job, and it doesn't raise a burr, so I quite like them. Here you can see where we are so far. So the next operation now is going to be to spot drill and then we're going to drill the keyhole at 3 16 size. Once again, just a few more sanity checks to make sure my drill location is going to be in the correct point and not into my vise. And off to the races. Now this should only go down about 20 thou, maybe 50, and we plunge down about 100. So once again, something was off with my zeroing, uh, with manual tool changing, uh, and I'm kind of still messing with this post-processor. I'm not, I don't, I don't know all the kinks on it yet, so. Anyways, we corrected for that. Uh, it was more than enough of a center drill, and then we went just through with a peck cycle with a 3 sixteenths to finish that hole. We drilled through the bottom of the part, so later when we mill off the back here, we'll have a, a clean hole through. And that's where we are so far. Raised a bit of a burr on the entrance to the drill, and if I had a chamfer mill, I would have ran around this part and took all those nasty edges off, but uh, we're going to have to do without for now because I currently don't have one. So basically what I did is I just cut the remaining stock off with a hacksaw, and uh, we're just going to put it back in the vise, and we're just going to mill off that back face. I'm going to do this all manually, well technically with the keyboard, but just manually chop off that hat because I, I don't see a need to code it up. This vise has a bit of a tendency to lift its moving jaw. Um, I was having issues with the parallels holding the part perfectly flat. This is kind of another reason I'm either going to go with the fixture plate or a better vise. But anyways, that is surfacing the back part off. I cut most of it out because it's not very interesting to watch a facing operation. Taking a hat off like that is kind of dangerous because um, you can get a little piece of metal that flies away. But it was so thin I wasn't really all that concerned about it. 
and we end up with this little finished part, which turned out beautiful. I'm incredibly happy for the first part coming off this machine. So uh, now we're going to move on and start making actually usable parts. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very excited to have everything up and running, and I'm super excited that uh, this first test worked out as well as it did. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.